Debs, I don't even know how it happened. Jaden and I just clicked. You know that feeling when everything just falls into place. But Mabel, you said before that he isn't a Christian. I mean, that's kind of a big deal, don't you think? Yeah, but it's not like that matters right now. People can change. Jaden's open-minded, and besides, I'm a Christian. I'm sure my influence on him will do the trick. You know, he even asked me once about prayer. He's curious, Deborah. I think I'm the one who can lead him to God. Curious isn't the same as committed, Mabel. Look, I've seen it happen before. It's a slippery slope, and I'm worried about you. Remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 6 14, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? You know, sometimes I feel like we Christians take that verse way too literally. I mean, how else are we supposed to reach people if we don't engage with them? Not everyone's going to come to church on their own. I'm just trying to show him the love of Christ through my actions. Mabel, there's a difference between witnessing to someone and dating them. You're not just talking to him about God. You're building a relationship. Relationships are built on shared values, and if he doesn't share your faith, he will. I know he will. And besides, what's the harm? I'm not compromising my beliefs. I'm still me, still a Christian, and I still love God. Jaden respects that about me. He even said he admires my faith. I'm not questioning your faith, Mabel. I know you love God, but I've seen how easily people can get pulled away from their relationship with him when they let their guard down. You've always been the one to remind me of that. Just be careful. You know how the devil works, slowly, subtly. You were so dramatic, Debs. I'm not falling away. God knows my heart. Besides, I'm doing this for him. Think of it as a ministry, okay? Jaden is like my my project. If I can help him come to Christ, it's worth it. Your project. Mabel, people aren't projects. They're not things you can fix. Only God can change a heart, not you. And what if he doesn't change? What if instead of pulling him toward Christ, he pulls you away from him? That's not going to happen. I trust God, Debs. He's working through me. You'll see. So where are you going? He is picking me up. We are going to his house. Ah, Deborah, my dear. What brings you to the garden? You look troubled. It's Mabel, Mrs. Martins. She's dating a guy who isn't a believer. She says she's trying to convert him, but I'm worried she's getting in over her head. She's changing, and not for the better. Ah. Yes, I've seen that happen more times than I care to count. Young people always think they can change someone, but it's not our place to change hearts. That's the Lord's work, not ours. I tried to tell her that, but she won't listen. She says she's doing the Lord's work by dating him, but I just don't see how that's possible when she's the one missing Bible study and picking up bad habits from him. The enemy is clever, Deborah. He knows how to make sin look like righteousness. He wraps temptation in good intentions, and before we know it, we're caught in his web. Have you prayed for her? Every day. But I feel so helpless. You're not helpless, child. Prayer is powerful. Keep praying, and keep speaking the truth in love. But remember, Mabel has to make her own choices. The Lord won't force anyone to follow his path. All we can do is guide and pray. So, church girl, what's your schedule like tomorrow? We hooting up that new club downtown? Maybe. But you know I have Bible study tomorrow night, right? I can't miss it again. Oh, come on, Mabel. One more won't hurt. You've been going to Bible study your whole life. One night off won't kill you. I don't know. I'm already behind on a few things. But, maybe I can make it work. I mean, it's not like missing one more will make a difference, right? Exactly. Plus, you're always telling me how much fun church is. Maybe you need a little balance. Let's live a little. 
All right, all right. I'll go. But next week, you coming to church with me, deal. Yeah, we'll see about that. I just love everything about you. Hey, Mabel. I've been meaning to talk to you. You didn't make it to Bible study again last night. Is that why you came to my house? Yeah, I know. It's just been... life, you know. Things have been hectic with Jaden. We went out with some of his friends, and it got late. I'll be back next week, though, I promise. Mabel, this is the third week in a row you've missed Bible study. And last Sunday, you weren't in church either. You said you and Jaden were going to a concert. Debs, I'm not abandoning my faith, okay. I just need a little balance in my life. Not everything has to revolve around church. God understands that. I'm not judging you, Mabel, but I can see what's happening. You're drifting. Slowly but surely, you're letting Jaden pull you away from your walk with God. You may not see it, but it's happening. You always think you know what's best for me, don't you? Just because I'm not at every church service doesn't mean I've stopped believing in God. My relationship with him is personal, Debs. I don't need to follow some rigid schedule to prove that. It's not about a schedule, Mabel. It's about where your heart is. Look, you're dating someone who doesn't share your faith, you're missing church, and you're picking up his habits. You're slipping, and it's not just about Jaden. It's about your relationship with God. I love you, and I'm worried for you. I told you, I'm doing the Lord's work. How am I supposed to bring Jaden to Christ if I don't spend time with him? If I don't understand where he's coming from? You don't know him like I do, Debs. He's different around me. He's just rough around the edges, but I see his potential. Potential isn't the same as actual faith. And you're not the one who can change him. That's God's work. You're trying to do it all on your own, and it's costing you more than you realize. Good night, Debs. I am tired. You're good, babe. You seem a little out of it tonight. Yeah, I'm fine. Just thinking about some stuff. Don't think so much. You're with me, remember? Let's just have fun. That's what life's about. So, Mabel, you're the church girl, right? What's a good girl like you doing hanging out with us? I can hang with anyone. Told you, she's not like other church girls. She knows how to have a good time. Hey, just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I can't have fun. You've been quiet today, Deborah. Is it Mabel again? I can see that she is not in church. Yes. She's... She's falling further and further away. I don't even know who she is anymore. She's so caught up in Jaden's world, and every time I try to talk to her, she just brushes me off. I'm scared for her, Mrs. Martins. She thinks she's doing the right thing, but I can see she's lost. The enemy is subtle, Deborah. He knows how to make sin look like righteousness, especially when the heart is involved. But don't lose hope. God is still with her, even if she's straying. Keep praying, and keep being her friend. Sometimes, love and prayer are the only tools we have. I just wish she would listen. I don't want her to learn the hard way. Sometimes, that's the only way we learn, child. But God's grace is always there, waiting for us when we're ready to come back. So, I've been thinking. You know how I go to church, right? I was wondering. Would you ever want to come with me? Just to see what it's like? Babe, we've been through this. Church isn't my thing. You're cool and all with your faith, but it's not for me. I don't need all that. Yeah, I know. I just thought maybe you'd give it a shot. I don't need church, babe. I've got you, right? You can do all the God stuff for both of us. Come here, girl. Lord, I don't know what else to do. I've tried talking to her. I've warned her, but she won't listen. Please, God, let her see the truth. Bring her back to you. I know you can change her heart. 
I know you can reach her where I can't. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Lord, I'm trusting in your word. You can break through to her, even when she feels too far gone. Please, God, don't let her slip away. Father, I come before you with a burdened heart. I lift up Mabel to you, Lord, and I ask for your mercy and grace to cover her. She's lost right now, but I know that you are a God who leaves the ninety-nine to find the one who has wandered away. Father, you see her, you see the pain, the confusion, and the guilt she's carrying. She's gone so far from you, but I believe there is no distance too great that your love can't reach. Your word says in Isaiah 1:18, Though our sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Lord, wash her clean. Bring her back into your loving arms. Let her see that your grace is greater than her failures. God, I know she's struggling to hear your voice in the midst of all the noise in her life right now. But I ask that you would speak to her heart in a way that she can't ignore. Remind her of who she is in you, your beloved daughter, forgiven, redeemed, and called by your name. Lord, remove the lies that the enemy has planted in her mind. She thinks she's too far gone, that she's unworthy of your love, but I declare your truth over her. 2 Corinthians 5:17. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Father, restore her. Bring her back to her first love. Let her remember the joy and peace she once had in your presence. You promised in Joel 2.25 that you would restore the years that the locusts have eaten. Restore what has been lost in her life, God. Turn her heart back to you. Let her find her purpose and identity in you once again, not in anyone or anything else. And, Lord, give me the wisdom to know how to love her through this. Help me to be patient, to speak truth in love and to continue standing in the gap for her. I know that you have started a good work in her, and I believe that you will be faithful to complete it. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. I trust you, even when things seem hopeless, because you're the God of hope and restoration. I know that you are already working in Mabel's life, even if I can't see it yet. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Amen. God, if you're still there, if you still care. Please help me. I don't know what to do anymore. I've made a mess of everything. I thought I could do this on my own, but I've just been running away from you. Please, show me what to do. I think I should call Deborah. I need to see you. Hi. I think I'm ready to talk. Can I come over? Of course. Come over anytime. I've been waiting for you my dear friend. Thank you Jesus. I'm so glad you came. I don't even know where to start, Debs. I've messed everything up. I thought I could help Jaden, but I've just... I've lost myself in the process. I don't know who I am anymore. I've been praying for you, Mabel. I never stopped. And God hasn't stopped either. He's been waiting for you to come back to Him. No matter what's happened, His grace is still here for you. I don't even know if he'll take me back. I've done so many things I'm ashamed of. I've been drinking, partying, I've missed church for months, and I've been so focused on Jaden that I've ignored everything else. I thought I was doing his work, but I was just running away from him. Mabel, God's grace is bigger than all of that. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It doesn't matter how far you've gone, he's always ready to forgive when we come back to him with a repentant heart. I want to come back, Debs. I really do. But I don't know where to start. I've lost everything, and now. I'm pregnant. Pregnant. Have you told him about it? He hissed and told me to get rid of it. You are going to be fine. We'll start by praying together. We'll ask God for forgiveness, for guidance, and for strength. You don't have to figure this out alone. God will walk with you, and so will I. I don't know how I'm going to do this, Debs. Being a single parent. 
I never thought this would be my story. My mother was also a single parent. You won't be doing this alone. God's got you, and so do I. He's brought you this far, and he's not going to leave you now. I know. I just never thought my life would take this turn. But maybe. Maybe this is part of God's plan for me, too. Romans 8:28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Even this, Mabel. God will use it for good. Can I stay with you for a few days? I'll love that. Lord, I'm here. And I'm sorry. I don't even know where to start. I've made so many mistakes, and I've turned away from you in ways I never thought I would. I thought I could handle everything on my own, but I was wrong, and now. I'm coming back. Please forgive me, Father. I know I've sinned, but your word says in 1 John 1, 9 that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I need that cleansing, Lord. I need you to wash me clean. Thank you for never giving up on me, even when I gave up on myself. Thank you for still loving me, even when I was running away. Like the prodigal son, I have come to my senses. I know I don't deserve your grace, but I also know that you give it freely. Please take me back, Lord. Let me come home. I want to live for you again. I want to follow you and do what's right. And Lord, as I raise this child, I promise that I will raise her to know you. I will raise her in your word and in your ways. Help me to be a godly mother. Help me to teach her about your love, your mercy, and your truth. I can't do this alone, but with you, I know it's possible. Thank you for Deborah, who never stopped praying for me. And thank you for your endless love. I'm yours again, Lord. I give you my life, my heart, and my future. Lead me, guide me, and restore what's been broken. In Jesus' name, Amen. This morning, we're going to talk about something that's dear to the heart of God, the lost sheep and the prodigal son. You see, God's love for us is so immense that He doesn't give up on us, no matter how far we wander. Some of you might be sitting here today, feeling like you've drifted too far, like you've gone so deep into sin that God could never take you back. But I'm here to tell you that that's a lie. God's arms are always open to his children, and he rejoices when one of his lost sheep returns home. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's open our Bibles to Luke 15, starting from verse 4. Jesus tells us about the shepherd who had a hundred sheep, but when one got lost, he left the ninety-nine to go after the one that was missing. Luke 15, 4 says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when that shepherd finds the lost sheep, he rejoices. In the same way, when we wander away from God, he doesn't stop pursuing us. He goes after us, and when we turn back to him, there is rejoicing in heaven. Verse 7 tells us, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine just persons who need no repentance. And then, Jesus tells another story, a story many of us know very well. The story of the prodigal son. Turn with me to Luke 15:11. In this parable, a son takes his inheritance and leaves his father's house, thinking he can live life on his own terms. He wastes his money, lives recklessly, and eventually finds himself at rock bottom. But here's the beautiful part, when he finally comes to his senses and decides to return home, what does the father do? The father doesn't scold him. He doesn't reject him. No, the father runs to meet him. Luke 15:20 says, But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. That's the heart of our God. He runs to meet us, even when we feel unworthy. He embraces us, clothes us in righteousness, and restores us to our rightful place as his children. So, my brothers and sisters, if you've wandered away from God, it's not too late to come back. If you've made mistakes, God's grace is bigger than those mistakes. Just like the prodigal son, all it takes is for you to turn around and come back to the Father. And when you do, 
know that there is rejoicing in heaven. God is waiting for you with open arms. Lord, I've made so many mistakes, but you've brought me back. And now, as I prepare to bring this child into the world, I make a vow to you. I will raise her in your ways. I will teach her about your love and grace, just as you have shown me. I will do everything in my power to lead her to you, to help her avoid the mistakes I've made. I know I can't do this alone, but I trust that you will be with me every step of the way. I give my life to you, and I give my daughter's life to you, too. Let her know you from a young age. Let her grow up in your truth. Help me to be the mother you've called me to be. Thank you for giving me a second chance, Lord. I promise I won't waste it.